What's up, YouTube? Back at it again. Not a day, it's the evening, but you know, we're gonna get after. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do the uh, Cortusi 30 minutes a day that turns into three hours and some busted knuckles. This is part of it. So, see the little blazer in the background? You guys have seen that, but you haven't seen this. Now, wait, before we get too carried away, can't show you everything. We're gonna have a little walk around video on this particular truck. Very sentimental truck. It's been in the family forever. It's 85. I think it's been in the family since 89, 90. So long time. Ended up with it. Done some pretty neat stuff. It's kind of a sleeper truck, if you will. You'll see. You'll see. We're gonna do a full walk around video on that. And oh well, this guy's in here for a little love too. It's part of fleet maintenance because when you have as much crap as I have, everything needs something always. So. Here's, here's what we're tinkering on today. We call this a sleeper truck. So why would a sleeper truck need racing suspension? Well, let me tell you why. Axle wrap, wheel hop. You may have heard it, you may not. If you haven't, thank God. This is one of the most violent teeth shaking experiences you've ever had. So I've already got the wheel off. So I got the wheel off here just to kind of show you what wheel hop is or, or try to explain it to you if you've never seen it. So obviously leaf spring, right? Differential in there, drive shaft, obviously. So what you what happens, so as the wheel goes forward, right? It wants to push, push the pinion up. That's fine. You ease out of the clutch and it does its thing and the the shackle back here it articulates and it, it gives it the little bit of give and it goes down the road. Well, uh, let's say for instance, you got a couple cuties outside of the local Dairy Queen and you wanna lay a, a set of 11s for them, show them what's up. You let on the clutch quick, the pinion hops, or pinion juts up quickly, right? The tire goes forward and starts to lose traction. The next thing you know, this leaf spring is just walking around trying to grab traction and it's what they call axle wrap or wheel hop so the tire's trying to go this way the pinion's trying to go through the bed it's no bueno how do we fix that well we fix it with a kit and what it'll do is it'll preload or it'll control the bottom can't see it but it part of it the uh, lower bracket will go there the front bracket will go there it'll have the bar in between and what that'll do is it'll control the axle up to the front to the uh shackle or excuse me the hanger the front bracket goes on there and it controls the rise and will keep it planted now funny enough this is called cow tracks for traction it's kind of the opposite of what we want because i want this to spin freely all the time because like the old saying goes if you're spinning you're not breaking anything let's dig into this guy calvert racing suspension on a sleeper truck don't mind all this junk in the bed. We're doing some more work to it. Here we are, part number 3240, 73 to 87, C10, C20, flipped. All right, now what it means by flipped is that it has a flip kit on the rear end, which this truck does. So specific part number for flip kit trucks. So, with that guy, let me show you what it comes with here. All right, so we've got a catalog. You can tell I've had this guy for a while instruction manual now this is actually a really good instruction manual it's got step-by-step -step, colored photos and everything but why would you want that when you can listen to me ramble and make stuff up as i go so along with that we have some bushings so these are going to replace the front leaf spring bushings uh the outer this part, whoop. this part replaces it. This part slides in and out, obviously, falls on the tailgate. So got those guys, one for each side. We got the spring perch situations. And look, look at the meat on these guys. I mean, these are no joke. Big Johnny Heim joints, nice hardware, nylocks, pretty. Everything powder coated. Got the link bars, right? and the front situations. I don't know what we're gonna call these, but the front brackets. 
and they'll go on the leaf spring. The uh, big bolts will go through here with the Johnny's over there, and you'll you'll see when we get it all together. It'll make sense. It kind of looks like a mess right now, but you'll see. The bar will go rearward, so boop, something like that. I go through there, and what this is going to do is this pin here is going to sit with just ever so slight amount of pressure. I think they, they think they call for like touching and half around on the bars and that's going to preload these guys pretty straightforward like i said there's a couple videos on this but not very good ones i'm gonna give it my little rendition here yeah we got all the parts this stuff now we just get started all right so update things didn't go as planned that's part of it we're gonna work through it though so let's show you what we got so far so obviously leaf springs out okay so, for those of you who don't know, one bolt in the front. It's got the two U-bolts that go over the axle. There, right? These guys. Nuts on the bottom. 24 millimeter. It's probably something in an SAE, but that's what I used. The front, I used a 7.8. The rear was the same. One bolt, like I said, four for the U-bolts. All right, so we got these guys out. So this is the front, and this bushing is what we're gonna press out to put our new sleeve in. But here's where the problem lies. I should have known, I should have known better, but if you look at our rear bushing, she's pretty cracked up. You can see how it's kind of pulled away from the sleeve here. You can kind of see it. Focus there, yeah, you can see how it's pulled away. It's cracked up and it just looks no good. So, we need some rear bushings and it's late because it's the end of the day and that's the only time I have to work on my own stuff. Ordered some of these, they'll be here tomorrow. Also, so for, use the, for the people that don't know, this goes, the spring, right? And this is the shackle, okay? So it goes up and it articulates like that, like that, okay. So, also, look how whooped this one is. You see it's pulled away from the sleeve. It's nasty. That is not gonna work. Reason being, your leaf springs, front to rear, imagine this with me. This controls the side to side deflection of the rear end and springs, these bushings do, right? So, with that being all cracked up, it's gonna allow more move and flex and articulation. It's no good. We need some more of those, some more of those. So we got them coming tomorrow. All right, we're back. Another day here in the shop, tinkering on the old sleeper C10. Uh, yesterday, uh, we'll throw some clips in. Took the leaf springs, went across them with the old wire brush on the grinder, got those dialed in, put some spray paint on them. Krylon rust protector. If y'all haven't discovered this, you need to get this in your life. It's awesome. Dries quickly, can go over rust, rusty-ish always wire brush my stuff 
So yeah, went over it with that. And we got the new aluminum sleeve in, pressed the old bushing out, put the new sleeve in. I didn't do that. These things are a bear. Local, you, if you don't have a press, it's no problem. Any of your local alignment shops will have the tools to do it. I took it over to my friends at Kessler Tire here in Gainesville, pressed them in and out, boom, 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 done. So let's take a look at what else we got. So obviously there's the new spring, or excuse me, the newly painted spring. Wire brushed it and you can see that it's just got a great satin black color to it on point. And we'll get to that end. This is the rear, the uh, shackle side. Went ahead and put new rubber bushings in here. Though they're, they're just kind of old and busted. So we just got some new ones to put in there and make sure everything's nice and tight. Speaking of old and busted, Look at these guys. Can you see the cracking? Oh, goodness gracious. Reminds me of this plumber I knew one time. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it. Get that out of here. In comes the new Johnny. Fresh hardware, probably paint, but I'm hoping it's powder coated. New shackle here. This is gonna be a Dorman part number. Let's see, focus in 722-066. If these got Johnny's from the local O'Reilly's. Yeah, got those painted up. You see the bushings on this side. Now, one thing that you have to note it, and it says this in the instructions. Be careful of the inner bore here, not to mar that up or change it in any way because it takes that sleeve that slides through and it has to be perfect fit. So we were, or they, they take, I'm gonna give them all the credit. They push these in perfectly, make sure they're flush on each side. And then when I painted them, I taped them off because even a little bit of spray paint can mess with the interference fit on those guys. So, yeah, while I was at it, wire brushed and painted up the U-bolts and U-bolt nuts. Uh, the washers are over there somewhere. Went ahead and put a little paint on the drum. And I don't know why in the world I didn't do that to begin with, but here we are. So, yeah, even put a little bit of... Uh, what I call cast blast or cast engine paint on the hub just to give it some contrast and make sure it doesn't rust. So let's slap it all together. Before we get too far, don't forget, like, subscribe, share, comment, do the thing. If you like what we're doing, thumbs up. If you don't like what we're doing, thumbs down. Let me know, let me know how we can improve. I'm trying to make this a better experience for both of us. And yeah, let's get the most out of this as possible. All right, side note here. This is the insert, right, that goes in here. And that'll kind of something like that right it says in the instructions to grease that but it doesn't really say what grease to use so we're going with the good old gold some people call it by its actual name copper but gold anti -seize. i think that's going to be our best bet all right so fast forward a touch we have everything mocked up into place now let me show you some key things here we did so, this assembly right here, right, these pivot arms, they slide over the leaf spring. Now remember, on the aluminum bushing end, slide over it, right? Then you put the, the steel bushing through with your handy dandy anti-seize. Like my buddy Chris Kern says, you'll find that stuff in your uh, cereal in the morning. That stuff gets everywhere, so wear gloves, be generous, but don't get crazy. Anyway, you'll figure it out. Those go in, go up into the hanger, factory bolt, okay? Move back on the bottom of the spring pack. Here you have this bracket. It goes up your factory U-bolts and whatnot. What I did with this one, now you see the rod, okay? Rod, heim joints here at the end. One's left-hand thread, one's right-hand thread. So when you spin this guy, it lengthens or shortens it at the same time. And then you just put your jam nuts down. All right, so like I said, mocked up stage. Some things to note, and he sees there, we talked about that. And he sees on the threads right there. Haven't done it yet, but that's mock up stage. Now, something I noticed. You see our clearance right here? This is what they call the overload spring or the helper spring. Now, I have the jack under the rear end and pretty much the weight of the truck's on it. Like, I wouldn't, 
It says in the instructions to set that with half a turn of preload. I wouldn't preload it now. I'd preload it when it's actually down on the ground because the, the force of it at the differential and the force of it on the wheels is different. So we're not setting that yet. This is kind of like mock-up, but see how close that is? I've actually checked. When it goes to droop, when you let it down, the overload spring actually hits the link bar. It's not good. Okay, so one thing you could do is you could take this out. Take this one overload spring out, give you all the clearance you needed. No problem, right? Well, the problem is if you do that, it's going to essentially lower the truck a little bit. I don't want that. I love the ride height to where it's at, so we need to leave that. What I'm going to do is come in here and get a little... Yep. Just like that. There we go. Now we got some good clearance there. Much, much better. Once again, this is with the jack under the diff. So it's up pretty high. Okay. It might touch if you completely unload the suspension, maybe say like on a lift or something, but driving down the road, I think this is okay. No worries when we go over the train tracks about a buck and a quarter. I don't think we're going to... Uh, worry about hitting all we did was take about five inches off the front of the spring you see it's still not touching we cut it obviously and then just rounded all the corners off and edges and everything just like it was factory so yeah now time for the other side all right we're back this is like day three of working on this thing it should not have taken this long but it's part of owning a shop and working on your own stuff in the side you never have time to do it. Just fitting it in a couple hours here and there, but realistically, I would say this was a four hour install by yourself on the floor. I did it on the floor because I had something on my lift. So, and it's relatable. That's why it is, it's relatable. So just kind of go over how we set things because I think I lost that footage last night. So here's what it looks like. All right, so you have the pivot bar, right? You have the link rod and back there is the back bracket on the bottom of the uh u-bolts and what you do is you with it on the ground wait on the tires you make it where either this bolt or that bolt i did this one because it's easier to get to make it where it has zero resistance they can just slide in and out of the hole in relation to the heim joints you know like these jam nuts will be loose and slide in and out with this pin resting on top of the leaf spring right and they call that zero preload all right so that was just there that was nice and sliding out snugged everything up and it's got these little flats here yeah it looks like a looks like a nut or bolt whatever and just take one of those as reference like i used the one facing me because it's the easiest and they want you to put half of a revolution preload all right so you'll see one way pushes this down towards the spring when we push it away we're trying to push it down so turn it half of a revolution of this to give it half a revolution or half a round of preload on that and that'll just get everything where it's nice and happy and you see we trim this side the leaf spring got plenty of clearance there put a little spray paint on it yeah be good to go now we just got a test drive all right, so we've been test driving it around here a little bit. Drives just like a normal truck. It's fine. Uh, sorry if it's a little loud. Um, it's definitely not three and a half inch single pipe exhaust. That's just an exhaust leak. And that rumbling you hear, I think we may have a spark plug wire off or something. Definitely not the biggest solid roller uh, camshaft that Comp makes. It's definitely not that. But, so, it drives like a normal truck. No problems. But this is called a traction. Uh, these are called traction bars, right? A traction solution. My question is, does it actually help with the traction? Let's see. Weirdest thing, you know, for a 305, 
with a couple of uh, spark plug wires off it should have hooked up better than that oh well until next time guys thanks for tuning in like subscribe you know the deal see you later